Ready to get on your back? <laughs> <laughs> oh, please don't say that. Ow. You just did what I did. <laughs> Earlier, Except I, mine was on camera. Earlier, when I was starting to take out the bolts and loosen them up, I totally annihilated the side of my head on the point of the. There's so much footage here that I have now decided to make this into two parts because. I feel like as I'm editing this video, or the, all the footage I have, I'm going to leave something out that someone probably wants to see. This time on American Made Classics, the rubble is back and it's badass! <coughs> it's also a... Uh... One wheel peel. <laughs> pushed into the garage, 69 Rebel, in the garage, and it's just uh, just me today working on her. Smiley is uh, not here. I uh, got a couple things to address. Um, one of them, as you can see, Smiley's, uh, angle that down, you can see that little puddle <laughs> right there. Smiley's uh, fix them up technique on the lower radiator hose gave up the ghost. So that is one thing we're going to have to try to fix. I got a couple of, uh, up in that box right there, I've got a couple of radiator hoses. Going to see if we can just uh, make one work or cut it to fit, something of that nature. So we got to fix that. Uh, we took off the master cylinder. It is 100% it is, um, froze up. There's no way we're going to be saving this thing. It hasn't had fluid in it in forever. We tried putting um, we tried putting some uh, penetrating uh, oil in there, penetrating fluid, and it just it hasn't helped. It hasn't done anything. Um, I'd like to get my push rod out of here, but anyway, I got a new master cylinder, so we're gonna put that new master cylinder on as well today. I even have just in case. In case we need uh, front wheel cylinders, I have two brand new front wheel cylinders as well for the front brakes. And actually on the new master cylinder, which is right here, I like it opened up. Here are those two wheel cylinders I was talking about, just in case we need them. On this new master cylinder, I purchased a. Uh, I can see what I'm doing here. Pushed. Uh, I purchased a uh, a plug because I really only we really only need front brakes for the time being. The car is not going to be driven on the road. You know, it's not even titled type of thing. We're just gonna get it so it moves and see if we can even get it to stop. So I'm just gonna plug off whatever one I hear, whatever's the rear. I just guessed. Whatever one is the rear, we'll get the plug, and whatever one is the front, we'll uh, get the stopping power. So, there's a new master cylinder, and our new wheel cylinders in case we need them. So, I think that should be everything left. Um, some things behind the scenes that I didn't show, I replaced, uh, or excuse me, I changed the oil. And that was an um, unbelievable amount of sludge in there. Just nasty, nasty oil. Um, I really hope we, hope we didn't do much damage. Yeah, I hope we didn't do much. I mean, I'm pretty sure we probably did some damage with that kind of oil that was in there. 
but uh, what are you going to do? So anyway, it's got a mixture of uh, transmission fluid in there right now and some good some good Rotella oil. Try to help clean it up in there and we'll drain that, change it again later. Um, uh, I thought there was something else I did. Thought there was, I thought there was something else. Oh, I, there was a gas leak right on the carb. Put some nice new hose clamps and a new piece of hose there and I took care of that gas leak. So as far as that goes, oh, there was one more thing. Uh, we were only running on seven cylinders before. One of the spark plug boots, uh, I don't remember, can't remember what cylinder it is. I think it'd be cylinder two on that one. The front cylinder on the passenger side, I believe that's cylinder two. Spark plug boot was off. So we were only running on seven cylinders and it still sounded good. I mean, that just tells you how much of a trooper this engine is. I could, didn't, even, didn't even touch the carb. Carb's been on, probably on there for who knows how long? I mean, for for the, that to run that good, and then on seven cylinders to run that good, that's that's incredible. So anyway, now it's running on all eight, and honestly, I don't really tell a difference because it still runs really good. Um, and sorry, and Smiley and I, we put we put two front seats in it. Still can't get in it. We're still missing the door handle on the driver's side, but uh, we can get it through the passenger side and work our way over. Other than that, let's get that uh, new radiator hose on. And then after the radiator hose, we'll try working on the brakes. And then this thing will be hopefully stopping. So, all right, let's get to it then, huh? All right, we got a new master cylinder put in the Rebel. And I got my plug on that one, like I said. We're just gonna try to get the front brakes working just so the thing can stop. And it's a free line lock. Right, Smiley? Yep. Smiley's back helping. Uh, so I got the new master cylinder put in when Smiley wasn't here. Thought that was the only problem with the brakes, but turns out I can't get any fluid to the uh, wheel cylinders now. And um, Smiley said he he's uh, he's ready to help with that issue. So what we got here, we got new wheel cylinders and we got new front brake hoses. We're gonna see if that uh, might take care of the take care of the issue. I'm thinking it's gonna be the hoses. Smiley thinks it's the hoses. More likely these are original. And they look pretty and original. And with how the inside of the master cylinder looked, all gummed up, I bet you. I mean, these are hard as a rock. I mean, yeah. he just broke I it. I mean, like. <laughs> <laughs> yep. so yeah, they weren't they weren't, uh, weren't going to be good for doing anything. Yeah, and surprisingly, I was able to get so, uh, replacement hoses within a day. I think for this. We don't have any fittings unless I could save this one. I, what I'll do is I might have some fittings. I'll cut this line right here. Okay. And then clean it up, clean all this original undercoating off, save the fitting, and then I'll just reflare it. I got my flare kit here. We'll okay. reflare that and then just you know do it that way. It might be easier than trying to fight with this. I might have some fittings, but I'll check. It will be easier. I know that. So now that this is broke, I was just trying to heat that up, shock it with water, mm -hmm. heat it up again, shock it with water, just to try to break it free. But I mean. That's just gonna round that flat that fitting off. So yep. I think I'll do that. So if, if you want to get me uh, side cutters, all right, we're gonna we're gonna go in deep. We're gonna cut it. Fun fact: This is a gas line. We're pretty confident there hasn't been a gas line in about 20 years. We hope. And ideally, you probably want an oxyacetylene torch or. Something that's a little bit warmer than just a map gas torch, but theory is you heat the living heck out of the uh, fitting, you douse it with water that shocks it, and you warm it up again, douse it again, and heat it up again, and then try to break it free. So since I decided we're just gonna reflare this line, I just cut the side cutters, crimped it, we got brake fluid going to there. So that means either the nice original hose, numbers matching hose, is either that clogged up or it's just gummed up, whatever, or collapsed on the inside where the wheel cylinder is. We have the wheel cylinders too. Um, might just put them on anyway, might as well, because knowing our luck, we'll get the hoses on, get out in the road, pull the brake, try to do a brake torque, and uh, the seals will blow out of it, you know, never know. Hey, now I got a three scratching on a 
three socket. Hey, Comes right out. The key is that shock method. I've seen a lot of people just heat it up and try to break it free. And all that really does, it just helps you round out the shit. Well, there's one flare. So now all we gotta do now is warm this up again without gacking the threads and get the line out of it. Yep. And for that, I'll give it to Rob. If you wanna give me a pair of vice, not vice grips, um, channel locks. I'll pull that clip off and then I'll turn the wheels the other way and stick my head back there and Channel lock is a generic term, kind of like Kleenex. Um, I don't know what else. Can't fault me, they're my channel. Oh, yeah. Well, that's seized enough where I'm going to say that we're just going to, for the time being, just zip tie the new line there. And honestly, we don't even need to zip tie it because I have a hard line on my truck going to the flex line. This is dangling in the breeze for past I think five years now so we'll zip tie the line here so in other words I'll need a probably a little wire wheel to clean up the undercoating off the line so I can get a nice cut make the fitting slide on when that time comes I don't need it right now okay. I'll work on getting the line out of the wheel cylinder and then I'll pull the wheel cylinder off quick and replace that while we're here because we'll probably pull the wheel cylinder as soon as we step on the brakes to try to do a burn on anyway and lose all brake pressure. And usually I just use good old vice grips for this kind of operation at work, but I decided to buy the tool and be somewhat professional. And Rob is currently breaking the line free of the fitting. This is the unorthodox way to use this tool, or the wrong way. Yes, I'm aware. But usually I just use vice grip right here. But I got it. And these are just the cheap parts that are ones too that I already broke. All right, take the duster cable off. <laughs> Mint. Hey, I hate to say it, but your number of matching brake system is crumbling. The cable for the uh, self adjuster. Oh, that's nice. Um, we could just mechanics wire it up for the time being. You know, just loop it up, yep. loop it around the guide onto the ear. Okay, pull those away. Uh oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna say the wheel cylinder cylinders are bad too. it up or seized up or anything. Mm. Ain't rusty but not bad. pull the cap off. I was just going to pull it back to see if there's fluid leaking out. Yeah. Cut on spring. Safe to say these weren't uh, sending fluid out anywhere. Yep. Okay, 
so it goes in like a day. Actually, we should see if uh, that fitting you have even threads into this line. Maybe it's a different thread. I've seen that before. If it is a different thread. I've seen it before. That would be really, really stupid. This ain't metric country we're working in, so it should be freaking standard. Not Canada. Especially, especially in 1969. You never know. Yeah, you're... Yeah. Did you see how paper thin your shoes are over here? Uh, good enough for now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, I'm glad we're not actually driving this thing anywhere yet. Are they, are they good enough to hold for a brake stand? <laughs> we'll, we'll find out. If not, we'll, we'll track the front tires. Oh, God. There we go. Pow. Okay. So, Rob got the... Uh, Fitting all cleaned up, looking 1969 fra factory fresh. Um, next this shot. This has a few pits. Few. So now, once I get everything hooked up on here, once we start throwing stuff around, um, we are gonna probably take a wire brush on a drill, to clean up the line from here down. Just have a nice clean surface to slide the uh, fitting on. And then I'll flare that. We'll have to figure out. I'm assuming it's just a standard flare. Can I turn that? Um, and then we'll move on to the passenger side. Gravity bleed. Because it should gravity bleed easily with this. And then we'll probably just pump her up two or three times just to verify that there is no air left in it. Pull the drums and hubs back on and go out and do some. Hellacious Browns, maybe. Now, do we know what end of Illinois this car came out of, north or south? I'm assuming it's south, Illinois. Uh, yeah. Just judging. Your guess is as good as mine. Judging by the look, to be. judging by the look of the car, it probably came from southern Illinois, where pretty much anything south of Champaign, Illinois, they really don't get that much snow. At least I've noticed. Um, not as much as we do. No. Our version of not much snow is. I don't know, maybe like a, um, foot? a foot every month. <laughs> that yeah. ain't much snow. <laughs> nope. Okay, so technically this is supposed to go on first. You want uh, some mechanics wire? I yeah. Got some, I got some. Um, then this one goes on second, if I do remember right, and then that one is third. It's more like bailing wire. There's a lot of excess wire. I think it's cut to, cut to size. It's a lot. It's a scissors thing. Oh, yeah. If I needed to tie something in the next county, we're good. <laughs> Which granted, the next county isn't that it's far. It's easier just to cut that much. Okay, we'll do that. I don't anticipate this working at all. This is just for my own humor only. Hey, it worked on uh, the 83. This is what you used on the brakes? I used it and it worked. Those babies were nice. They worked perfectly. Factory Fresh 1969. <laughs> Okay. I'm sure you can find them somewhere. I'm sure. I'm 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 sure you can get them in a factory overhaul because, or uh, overhaul kit for the brakes. Conley is the same way. It needs them. Oh, let's do it like that. So I have some tension on it, like that. Yeah. I mean, honestly, as it long as as best, long as as long as this ain't seized up and I can get it so much. Oh, those turn. I already, I got them to turn. Okay. On. We'll just clean up the uh, threads. I'll probably just probably spray it with coil. If you want to get me a vice grip too, because more than likely I'll need that instead. An actual vice grip this time? Yeah. Not a vice grip branded needle nose. Because, yeah, that's another one. Vice grip brand. What's that? Vice grip brand. Yep. Um, like channel locks, Kleenex. What is another one for tools? I thought there's another one. I'm sure there's something I can't think of. Well, one question I have is why do you call uh, side pieces dikes? I wonder if that was a brand new. I think it was. I never, I honestly will, with, with our generation, I've, I've never heard anyone call it dikes. Well, it's mainly the it's, well, it older, it is, but, well, yeah. But, I think it's mainly the older generation. Okay, how did this hook on? It, this one fell off, so. It'll go like that. 
I don't know if I can do that backwards. Oh, by the way. Yep. That is how it's going to end up. Oh, yeah. Just, right. like, just like that. I mean, I know a little bit about drum breaks. I just hate working on them. <laughs> Once you once you do them once or twice, well you're comfortable with them. Just don't really care about brakes. I mean, I'm used to semi trailer drum brakes, which are super easy. Oh great, now there's a lot of slop in that. Um, semi trailer drum brakes are so easy because what it is is your your shoes are like this, but you rotate them 90 degrees so you're at top and bottom shoe, and then all you got is you got a brake cam here. It looks like an S, and you have rollers on the shoes or the on the, the tables of the shoe. That kind of ride up and down with a little bit of curve in the S. So when the brakes are applied, they turn, they expand out. Anyway, you have a master spring here to here that hold the back half of them together. And then you got a spring here, spring here, spring here, spring here, or, you know, two of them hooked on each side. And you just need a pretty much a bar with a slight bend on it and a hook on it. Or I've seen people use vice grips before. I don't like doing it on the, the big yeah, brakes, but that, 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 that's those, so those are 10 times easier than these, in my opinion. Oh, yeah, that'll work. Okay, we'll leave that in there for now. If you want to go in and clean from here down on all sides, you can, I just go like this a little bit and just get both sides. And then we'll take your tubing cutter, cut it, and then I'll get my flare kit out. I'm assuming that this takes the normal flare. <laughs> Okay, now, so I see a lot online from people that are deathly afraid of flaring brake lines. And it's rather simple. The key is to have a good quality set. I'm using a used, to me, uh, Matco set. It is a Matco, let's see if I can even see this label. FT93 FBB double flaring toolkit. Um, I've learned that the main good thing to have is these good dyes, the high, the high carbon steel or whatever composition there, because you get these cheaper sets, you know, from the brake part or the parts stores. You know, they're just white pot metal, if that, at best. Um, well, anyway, you before you got to make sure you have the fitting on the line. About five minutes ago, I was getting ready to flare, and I realized I didn't have it on there, so I caught myself. So first, you get this clamped on the line with your fitting on. You set, on this set, you have that much room to move. And on the Matco one, they give you that shoulder, which is a little bit shallow. My Matco kit doesn't have a 316th uh, adapter, apparently. I need to get one. Anyway, you set the depth there. So that looks good. You crank these down. Like crazy, I use vice or channel locks to Grip them down. Um, I will say the worst lines I've had to do is on the newer GM stuff, the Express Vans, uh, precisely. They have a black E coating on the brake lines, which cut the line. You have to sit there and sand the stuff off. You can't, you know, it's 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 a hard finish. So it's not like wire wheel. It's harder than that. It's harder than brake or uh, undercoating. So we'll double verify it and move it. Yes, that's good. Okay, we'll stick that in the line. Stick the pressing action boy on there. Get that centered. Spun in by hand. Get the old magic bar out. And proceed to dump it right in the drain bucket. I'm gonna wipe it off. Brake car spinner. So you do not do that. I thought this was supposed to latch in here like uh, the taps that I got. Yeah, see that's all wallered out. Or this ain't the right handle for the brake kit. One of the two. I got it used off a coworker. Just recently? Um, a couple months ago. And this is the first time I used it. Because it's not all too often. I uh, flare lines. I have to flare a line at work because usually we have all the 
factory GM lines and then only time we have to make new lines is on the older step vans that we don't uh, have they don't make line kits for we'll just make them ourselves good news is this didn't break off in there cheap it's cheap so there, there's a nice flare it's a bubble flare now yep and they had the this is I think what you double flare it with yep so all your all the other mechanics that actually flare lines more often than I because you also got to remember I work on semi trailers so airlines And you don't need to flare lines on airlines when you have crimp, or, uh, crimped on airlines and nylon with uh, quick connects or EOT compression fittings. Okay, let's see how that looks. It looks pretty good. I must say so myself. We'll just see how bad it leaks. <laughs> have faith. That's beautiful, actually. That is beautiful. Okay, so we're gonna cheat it so we don't leak any fluid. Yeah, flare wrenches are also your your friend. What do you need? Five eighths? Oh, I thought you said that was. I said five eighths. No, you gave me a little sixteenth and a three quarter. <laughs> so now the difference for you know standard wrench, the flare wrench is on here you got this and this only thing that are contacting the nut when you tighten it. So that can cause slippage and round off the little fittings. Now with the line wrench you got that, 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 all contacting, reducing the chance of slippage. So the grip on, these are I believe Sunex, Sunex tools. Got these off the Mac tools truck and they're reasonably priced. I've never had one fail on me yet and they are quite awesome in my opinion. Because as far as I'm concerned, yes, the snap-on ones are beautiful too. Um, but if you're getting like regular wrenches I have at work, Sonex brand wrenches too that are decent. But nothing beats the snap-on flank drive wrenches. Okay. So since I'm embarrassingly low on uh, zip ties, that should be fine. Uh, I still want to tie okay. it just in case. Yep. So we're doing use some mechanic wire, mechanics wire. All right. Whatever you want to call that stuff. Like I have zero zip ties. Bailing wire, farmer's wire, mechanics wire. No, I'm sure I probably have some around here somewhere, but I don't know where they went. I bought a crap ton from our last in Denver to the other end of the state. I mean, this ain't pretty. This is just to hold it so it ain't flopping into the wheel, pretty much. That's what I, that's what I want. Yeah. I want to avoid a possible chance of that happening. I can't believe you're always a nice tire. Okay, one side's theoretically done. Okay, um, do you have the outer bearing? Yeah, everything's in there, it should be. No. The outer bearing, not the inner. Yeah, okay, yeah, the inner bearing is in there. Yeah, I know that. I just need the outer bearing. Water bearing might need some cleaning. Oh god. We adjust the brakes up a little bit. So I never understood what the spring on the drum is for. I don't know either. Looks. I could have spent the money somewhere else. Okay, Smiley's got the uh, front brakes all put back together, and we think it has brakes. We haven't tried it yet. We just basically got the car down on the, on the ground, uh, finished up a couple things. We got our new uh, fuel system that runs right through the dash below the steering wheel down there and for a little jerry can. Absolutely mint. <laughs> hope it doesn't start on fire. It doesn't fire. Well, we're going to take some fire extinguishers with us, too, but we're going to try to take this thing for a ride. All we have is uh, on and off and a start push button on the dash now. We don't know how hot it's gonna get. We don't know if it's gonna run any good. We're gonna see. We're gonna take it for its first test drive. And rain, it's raining outside. It's supposed to be snow tomorrow. Snow tomorrow. Well, let's see if it fires up again. Battery hooked up? Sure. 
It's that premium luxury interior door handle only. Have a running engine. Got a massive chunk of ice down my coat. <laughs> the audacity. All right. We need one of those stickers. No seatbelts. We die like real men. <laughs> Does that apply for no dashboards, no gauges? Uh, the front brakes only. Oh, shit. Uh, Remember how I said we were going to bring along a fire extinguisher? <laughs> well, let, let's cut to that real quick. Well, if we bring one, we'll need one. Somehow that logic does not seem right to me. Oh. So through my own tomfoolery, while he was grabbing the fire extinguishers that I didn't think we needed, uh, managed to sink the float. So. Once in the back. I think I Everyone knows that's the true fire fix. And I'm going to stay out here to watch the fireball come out of the carb. We used to have a fire extinguisher. Yeah, because pumping the gas is going to make it uh, better. What'd you do, Smiley? I don't know. Uh, I just noticed that you did not put the uh, oil fill cap back on either. Oh, really? Yeah. Cool. Here, you can see the other half of our fine fuel system. I got a uh, mechanic wire to the power steering line, to the pot washer fluid lines, and to the nice new uh, master cylinder. The gas hose came out a little bit. Oh, the gas hose came out of the can. What kind of fuel system do you have going on here? Oh, apparently it's not as good as I thought it was. Darn. It's kind of shitty. <laughs> let's try this. Let's try this backwards. Fuel systems be damned. Yeah, go through the big end. No oh, shit. Okay. Okay. I bet you that'll work. Um, where is the uh, oil cap for this thing? In the garage on the uh, air cleaner. Back. Ah, corona. Yep. Problem is doing that, that battery has no charging either. No. Might get some gas, throw it on the carb. Give her. Give her. Okay. Less worrying about the window crank and more worrying about keeping the thing running. Nice windshield we got here. Yeah, it'd be nicer if we had wipers. 
Well, they are vacuum wipers. Maybe they, oh, they, don't, they don't look so good. Maybe I shouldn't even try them. Ah. All right, let's go around the block, see what she does. Let her warm up. This is the fastest this car has been in how many years? 20 years? You didn't shut the hood tight, I'll tell you that much. Well, I don't know if the lash worked. It works. Okay. Uh, pull over here, I'll jump out and uh, lash it all the way. Freaks are a little spongy, but we got something. Better than nothing. Better than nothing. Want to turn it on the corner? Sure. It's a big steering wheel, holy crap. Okay. That's pretty much all the brake I have. <laughs> I need to adjust the brakes up. Yeah, probably a little bit. Because that's why I just slam the drums on every day. All right. Go. Oh my god, full focus is not in power, that's all I got. Come on, make pop sure it. we're not on fire. Wanna. It's an outside latch. Oh yeah. Just make sure we're not on fire. Ah, uh, where is the latch on this thing? I forgot. You probably should have practiced that before you shut Well, it. isn't there a pull down here? Right here? Oh, I thought there was a pull down. Not on this one. Which one was that? The 68? Uh, you think so. Oh, it's definitely warm. Oh, we don't know how much fucking... Don't do that. We, we don't know how much we had in there. <laughs> now we know. Okay, stop, just crack, just leave it on there. We know now. Someone might need some of that. Yeah, you think? <laughs> Mr. Fireman, okay. Hey, we had to make sure. Let me put the battery back where... If I can stop hitting my, <laughs> if I can stop hitting my head on this hood of this car, it'd be better. Okay. Ow. It sure smelled weird, but you never know. Yeah, but when was the last time this thing actually warmed up all the way? That's what we don't know. Something. 